Uh, well, I'm not a mad sailor. I actually still get seasick on the ocean, but I, I just, I just remember it being like the America's Cup. It was the first time the cup had actually been uprooted out of Victoria and sent somewhere else. We were about three or four goals down and we kicked the, the last two just before half time and given what had happened the previous year, was that steely look in everyone's eye at half time to know that this is this is our time, this is it. We've done our done our hard yards, we understand what we need to do and then that was that probably the last sixty minutes where the boys yeah just stuck and it came true and we got across the line. Number seventeen, Guy McKenna. We were just probably all grateful that Carl Langdon was playing that day because he copped most of it. Uh, Louis copped a bit, you know, Brett Eddy, you can pick up SBS with those things and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, so there was, you know, a bit of uh, jocularity if you like, but it certainly seemed to relax the fellas and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was done well. It's their first grand final, remember, at the MCG for the club. They were at Waverley Park last year. Obviously it was a lot more um, invigorating than running onto Waverley the year before. Uh, and that was probably it and that's where I think when you, you burst out on the ground and it's the MCG, I think, and the roar goes up, um, I think then you know you're alive and this is what it's all about. Yeah, the MCG, it was just different. This is, this is where it is. This is where the game's played. This is where men are men and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, the goosebumps, you know, and the hair on the back of your neck just standing to attention, it was, um, it was amazing. I didn't say I didn't think we were going to win it at half time, but those two goals we got late because they actually got away a bit from us just in that second quarter, Geelong, and then I think Evo kicked one and maybe Summer would kick one as well. Um, just going in, so we were maybe still two goals down at half time, but I just felt that momentum had swung our way, and then obviously what happened to us last last year, we just knew that it wasn't going to happen again this time. You gave me a bit of a victory sign when I was walking around the boundary line there. You're very confident about the 25 minute mark. Yeah, it was about yeah, five minutes to go and about five up, so I thought, you know, if, uh, as long as the boys keep pushing hard, we're we knew how it in the bag, so it was just a good feeling. One lesson probably Mick's always said about football clubs and coaching and, and premierships and playing with blokes, it's about respect versus like, and um, you want to walk out of a football club respected, and so that bond that's just always there, you don't always uh, in each other's pockets. Um, I'm up on the Gold Coast, um, there's certainly no premiership people up there. I stay in contact with a, only a small few of that 92 group. Emails going around and all that, you know, text messaging and things like that, but it's just when you're when you come back into a room with them all again, it's like you only played the game on the weekend. And I think that's where that bond is. And I, I think it's forged because of respect. Not, not so much, and again, we're all, we're all different animals. We all uh, act differently socially, professionally, all those type of things. But it's just, um, there's that mutual respect because we went through the hard yards and won a flag together. And that's where the respect comes from. So I think, I think it outweighs the, the like part of it. But I think that's what you achieve out of uh, results like that.